What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. So much like my other benchmarking videos, this one's going to be focusing on a brand new game. In this video, we'll be running through every single graphics option inside of Hitman 3, the newest release in the Hitman series, currently only available on PC via the Epic Game Store. So if you haven't seen it release on Steam and you're wondering why, that's simply why. If you'd like to know how to move your progress across from Hitman 2 on Steam to Epic Games and a couple of other interesting videos, check the description down below. Anyways, intro over. You came here specifically to see the exact effect that every single performance setting has on Hitman 3, and that's exactly what you'll be getting. Without further fluff, let's just jump straight into it. So first of all, these graphics options are simply in the order that they are in the main menu when first launching up the game. Note that I've avoided very obvious ones such as VSync as it limits your frame rate and resolution as lowering that will always give you higher FPS. So to begin, level of detail. Obviously, the higher that this is, the less performance that you have. But while doing actual benchmarks, things seem to be a little bit less clear. On the lowest possible settings, I got 92 FPS. Raising it to medium, I got 99, high 96, and ultra 95, meaning that the medium option had the highest FPS for level of detail. Now, I'm not too sure if this has something to do with the benchmark that I used in particular. Maybe this would be a bit more revealing in actual gameplay, more over the long term than the short term. But for now, I can only rule this out as some kind of margin of error and say that having this set to a lower option should give you higher FPS as the low option was a bit confusing. In fact, after recording this, I'm going to go ahead and benchmark that one setting once again just to make sure there wasn't an accident. If there was, you'll instead see it on the screen and I'm pretty sure that the lower that the setting is, the more FPS you can expect in game. Then we have texture quality. Obviously, the higher that this is, the less FPS you'd expect but not really here. There's really no difference between low, medium, and high, but of course the real impact will come in VRAM usage. If you have a relatively new and relatively powerful graphics card with a couple of gigabytes of VRAM, then you can crank this up to high. I have a GTX 1080 Ti inside of my computer, which has a good 11 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, of course, if you're running a less powerful graphics card or one with less VRAM, I'd recommend cranking this down to medium or low, especially if you notice big FPS differences. So what you have it on here really is dependent on your VRAM and won't have a huge impact on your FPS. Then we have texture filtering, trilinear, anisotropic 2 through 16. You'd expect absolutely no difference between the lowest and the highest possible option, as these effects really don't have that much effect on gameplay or FPS. The only thing they have an effect on is how the game looks. Anisotropic 2 through 16 had absolutely no effect on FPS. However, setting it to trilinear gave me about a 2% FPS boost. This is of course well within margin of error as it went from 98 to 100 FPS. Although the 98 FPS was rather consistent, being exactly 98.1 to 98.4 FPS between Anisotropic 2 and 16. So once again, set this to what you like there is really no difference. Then we have SSAO. Of course, the higher you set the setting, the lower FPS you can expect, and that's exactly what we got. This is probably the most clear one out of every single setting in this list. If you set it to off, you can expect a 21 or 22% FPS increase over having it set to ultra. On off, I achieved 110 average FPS, and on ultra, I achieved 90. That's a full extra 20 FPS, making your experience just that much better. As you drop it down step by step, the game will progressively feel better and better FPS wise and consistency wise. Then we have shadow quality. Having this to the lowest possible setting will give you the highest possible FPS. Though with only a 5% FPS increase over the ultra option, you may want to go with medium as setting it to low might give you rather jagged shadows. If you set it to medium instead of ultra, you can expect a 2% increase over ultra. Then we have mirror reflection quality. I, of course, have a 1080 Ti, so I'm not too sure if there's anything to do with ray tracing in this game, but the results for this were rather consistent. Having this on high gave me a solid 94 FPS, and dropping this down to low gave me 108 FPS, a full 14% increase in FPS average. Of course, each step down on the list gives you higher and higher FPS. Then we have SSR quality. Unfortunately here, results aren't too consistent. Having it set to the highest option, high, gave me 96.7 average FPS, medium gave me 94, low gave me 99, and off gave me 97. 
these settings really are all over the place. According to my results, the order would really go medium for the worst possible FPS, then to high, off and low for the best possible FPS. It's quite odd that high gives you better FPS than medium, but I'm not too sure what happened there. Once again, I can only assume that this is some kind of margin of error and having this set to a lower option will give you better FPS. And that's exactly what's reflected in the 0.2 percentile. Having SSR quality set to off had 61.6 FPS in the 0.2 percentile and 34.7 in the 0.2 percentile for high, meaning that you'll get a much more consistent higher frame rate on SSR quality off compared to high, even though it may not make that much of an impact on your FPS on average. Then we have a variable rate shading. Of course, once again, the lower that this option is, the better, though not in a way that you'd expect. Having this set to performance gave me 97.9 .9 FPS average, quality 98.9 .9, and off 100.8 average FPS, meaning having this on off will give you the highest possible FPS, then quality, and then finally performance. In the 0.2 percentile, I would think that this has something to do with margin of error, but having a look at the other percentiles here, it seems to be a more consistent, smoother frame rate when set to off compared to performance, and performance seems to give worse results than quality. Super odd and super unexpected here. Having variable rate shading set to off will give you the best possible FPS. Then motion blur. This is really up to user preference and having this set to off will give you a slight 2% FPS increase above all of the other options. Changing between low and high seems to average around the same FPS. There isn't really a difference, though having this off does give you a very slight FPS increase of about 1 to 2 FPS. Though, looking at the other percentiles, I think that this average isn't really something to draw conclusions on, and there shouldn't be that much of a difference in stability between all of the different settings. So, of course, it's up to you, user preference. Then we have simulation quality graphics, being base and best. Having this set to base gives me 99.6 average FPS, and having this set to best gives me 96.6 FPS. Lowering this option from best to base gives me an extra 3% in FPS, which is about three extra FPS. It's not too much, but it's something. Override memory safeguards has two options, no and yes. Setting this to either of them has absolutely no difference on FPS or stability in general. The only thing I can imagine this having an effect on is your long-term performance while playing the game. The longer you play, the more memory it'll use and possibly at some point in the future, it'll become unstable. So having this set to no is the best option as it's not going to override memory safeguards then. And then finally, unlike most of my other benchmarking tests, I combined the worst possible and best possible settings in a combination to see how much FPS you can really gain. And in total, I gained about 43.33% by changing it from the worst possible settings, having everything on high, to the best possible settings, having everything on the lowest possible, following this guy that you've just watched. It took me from an average of 85.4 FPS up to 122.4, and a 0.2 percentile of 47 up to 83, meaning that your game will also be a ton more stable. But anyways, that's about it for this quick video. If you'd like to see something more in depth, or you'd like to see something else related to Hitman 3, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you all for watching, my name is Techno, here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!